and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is the next in my mini-series on the elements in magic. I've already done water and air, and today I'm going to be discussing fire, its associations, and how you can use it in your practice. If you enjoy this video, I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel. The elements are a part of many witchcraft and pagan practices and are believed to be the base of all matter in existence. The classical elements of water, air, fire, and earth have become a representation of the different energies in our world. Tapping into the energies of the elements can help us find both exploration and balance in our lives. Fire is perhaps the most mesmerizing of the four classic elements, and yet it's the only one that can't be touched without harm to the body. Like all the elements, fire bears both creative and destructive force. Simultaneously dangerous and beautiful, our respect for fire usually begins the first time it burns us. Fire is the most physical and spiritual of the elements. It is the energy of life and the soul and driving force. For over 100,000 years, fire has made it possible for us to cook nutritious meals, work and play after sunset, and warm ourselves in colder climates. However, an actual fire is not strictly necessary for communing with this element. The element of fire is a projective, active, and masculine element and is contrary to water. It's associated with the qualities of brightness, and motion. It represents light, change, energy, inspiration, love, sexuality, passion, desire, life force, spirit, will, leadership, faith, trust, elusiveness, physical and personal vulnerability, relationships with others and self, renewal, self-healing, strength, protection, and the destruction of negativity. Fire is powerful, transformative, and helps to spark ambition, courage, tenacity, and is responsible for life changes. It's also seen as highly purifying and protective, consuming impurities and driving back the darkness. Fire is represented by the sun and its light, as well as the stars, deserts, and volcanoes. Always in motion, even when rooted in one spot, it's the most active and animated of the classical elements. Of course, the same power is also dangerous and deadly when unchecked, which is why this element commands such respect from those who seek to use it. Fire can be extinguished by the other elements, but it is also the only element that must have another substance to consume in order to maintain its existence. It is in fire that we and our ancestors used to warm our homes, we use it to cook our food, we sit around it to ward off the darkness of night, and it fuels our passions. Fire, unlike the other elements, does not exist in a natural state. Its physical form can only take place by consuming the element of air in the form of oxygen. Fire is the transformer, converting the energy of other objects into other forms, heat, light, ash, and smoke. Fire is both creative and destructive. It is itself a balanced force that can kill, but also birth new things. Forest fires, for instance, are necessary for certain trees and plants to grow. The destruction gives room for new growth. The fires of the sun have this same correspondence. The sun can both destroy with drought and create life with its energy and heat. Fire has a long and rich history in folklore, from how man first acquired fire to the Celtic fire festivals still celebrated by witches and pagans today. The vast amount of folklore around fire suggests a few things. First, fire is an important source of life. It warms, cooks food, and inspires. Second, fire is an important protector and purifier. It has the ability to consume all that it touches. In modern times, witches use fire for these same reasons, often as in protection rituals and to send messages to the spirit world. In many traditions, fire is considered the mouth of the gods as it is used to deliver offerings. In rituals, you can use candles, LED candles, fire-forged objects, volcano or lava rocks, associated stones or herbs, the athame, the cauldron, a censer, or burned herbs to represent fire. You could also use a sword, a dagger, a spear, an oil burner, or a lamp such as a salt lamp. You might use fire for spells involving protection, purification, passions, sex, love, healing, transformation, success, willpower, determination, energy, strength, courage, authority, inspiration, the family and hearth, in kitchen witchery, banishing negativity, death and rebirth, breaking bad habits, and destroying illness and disease. 
Fire is excellent in cleansing yourself of unwanted emotions. It's also good for bringing out your innate joy in life and passion for living. Fire is also the perfect element to work with when trying to enact change, especially social change. You can also bring fire into your spells and rituals by using the astrological signs associated with it, which are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. These are passionate, fierce signs that are always doing something new and exciting. As I said before, you don't have to belong to one of these signs to work with fire magic, but if you do, you might feel more connected to it. Some people find it easier to work with fire when either the moon or sun are within these fire signs. The sun will usually stay in each sign for just over a month and the moon will be in each for a few days. You can find plenty of calendars online or even apps that will let you know when the planets enter which signs. Each classic element is associated with one of the cardinal directions and fire's direction is south. In the pentagram, fire is represented by the lower right hand point. The alchemical symbol for fire is an upward pointed triangle. The main ruling planet for fire is the sun, but you can also use Mars and Jupiter. If you work with planets and cosmic energies, you can incorporate this into your fire workings to help aid them and add an extra level to your spells. I love using color magic and will usually use it in some way in most of my spells and workings. As you might expect, the main color associated with fire is red, and you can work with different shades of red, such as scarlet and crimson. However, you can also use shades of orange or even gold. Using the natural gold of a beeswax candle can work too. There are certain crystals and stones that are usually associated with each element. The ones for fire are fire opal, obsidian, ruby, sunstone, carnelian, citrine, red jasper, beryl, bloodstone, agate, amber, rhodochrysite, labradorite, orange calcite, pyrite, hematite, tiger's eye, diamond, flint, moldavite, and quartz. Clear quartz can be programmed for any purpose, so you can really use it with any of the elements. Most igneous rocks are also intertwined with fire because they are stones that are created through volcanic activity, so their actual creation has to do with fire. These are stones like lava rock or pumice and are often much more inexpensive than precious or semi-precious stones that are used for making things like jewelry. There are also metals associated with fire, which include gold, brass, and iron or steel. Any metals used in forging are said to correspond with fire, especially if they have already been through the forging process. I know gold is quite pricey, but you can even use gold-plated items like earrings or rings instead of solid gold. You can even use a gold-colored metal, even if it's not actually made of real gold. As I said in previous videos, I like to work with metals and the elements by enchanting my jewelry. I mostly wear silver, so would use water to enchant it, but I do own some gold jewelry too. To enchant it using fire, you can wave the jewelry through a candle flame or smoke. Be very careful when doing this not to burn yourself or the item being enchanted. You can also set the piece in amongst some stones or herbs associated with fire and let it charge and enchant there until you feel it's ready. Next are the animals associated with the fire element. I personally feel very connected to animals and I know a lot of other people do too and enjoy using their energies in their practice. You can do this by using oracle cards, drawings, printouts, small animal figures, or other symbolism. There are certain animals that represent fire, whether because of their physical characteristics, their capabilities, or where they live. Of course, I don't expect you to have access to these live animals around you, but you can use their imagery instead. The animals associated with fire are lions, tigers, snake, coyote, fox, porcupine, badger, Komodo dragons, most reptiles, and desert-dwelling animals. Also, praying mantis, ladybug, bee, cricket, and scorpion. These animals are fierce, strong, and commonly used to represent leaders and royalty. The more an animal has those qualities, the more likely they are to be connected to the fire element. Now on to the plants and herbs for fire. Before working with any plant materials, please do thorough research to be sure they are safe before burning, ingesting, or using topically. Some plants will be safe to use in one way, but not in another, so please be careful. It's also probably a good idea to do a small test just to make sure you aren't allergic before using a large amount of any herb. The fire plants include angelica, allspice, betony, hibiscus, red pepper, cinnamon, chili peppers, coffee beans, basil, cacti, marigold, sunflowers, mustard, juniper, lime, orange, rosemary, thistle, nettle, red poppies, cumin, 
coriander, saffron, dragon's blood, tobacco, alliums like garlic and onions. Also, cedar, fig, oak, holly, mahogany, maple, rowan, and almond trees, and most nuts and seeds. I'm sure there are plenty more, but I can't possibly list them all here, or the video would be super long. Herbs that correspond with the element of fire tend to cause a warming sensation when smelled, touched, or eaten due to the presence of various chemical constituents or a sensation of pain due to the presence of thorns or spines. They are often protective or anti-inflammatory in nature. Some plants that are traditionally burnt are associated with the element of fire on that basis alone. You can use herbs and plants in different ways, such as for offerings, in teas, for use in workings, and more. A great way to use them would be to create your own incense blends for your specific intended purpose. This way, not only do you have the fire energy in the herbs themselves, but then by burning them in an incense, you're also physically getting the fire element in the working. By layering these different elements together, you can end up with a really powerful spell. Some people also like to connect to the energies of different fire beings, such as the elementals. For fire, the elemental is a salamander which here refers to a mythological lizard creature which could burst into flames. Some other fire spirits are fire drakes, dragons, phoenix, chimera, and jinn. Like with the animals, these are each somehow related to fire, such as dragons breathing fire or how the phoenix is reborn through fire and ash after death. It's usually said that when asking for help from any of these spiritual beings that you need to give an offering. It's important to actually give the offering you've agreed to give or they might refuse to help you, or even worse, cause some kind of retribution against you. When I did my video on the water element, I talked about the different types of water, and with air, I discussed the different directions it can blow. With fire, I'm going to talk about its three different aspects, the fire itself, the smoke, and the ash. A fire can be hot and fast burning, or slow and more cool burning. A fast burning fire expands swiftly and releases a lot of energy all at once. This can be used to get your intentions out and help a spell work more quickly, but it's also very powerful and you need to be careful how you direct that kind of power. A more symmetrical fire that takes its time could be a nice addition to longer term spells like for romance and relationships. The essence of smoke is mystical and evocative and is a fundamental human symbol of higher realms. Smoke used for sacred ceremony can be seen in all cultures across all time with the basic element of fire relating to transformation. Smoke can symbolize our contact with the spiritual world and is often used as a conduit to communicate and invoke spirits. You can burn different herbs and use the smoke to cleanse different objects or yourself. It is said that ashes hold no active energy. However, because ash is made up of different elements, sympathetically, I think it represents change, transformation, and the union of different parts. In other words, when you take woods or herbs and burn them and collect the ash, what you have is a new substance. Ash's energy is deep and pervasive transformation, but it's a cleansing, retreating, releasing, and cutting away energy as well. When you think about ash and charcoal, it draws out, dries out, and pulls back. This is a very refined type of movement and energy. So when using ashes for spell work, more than anything, you're tapping into the energy of transformation and release banishing, purifying, and taking away in order to leave what is most purely left. And the beauty of ash is that you can make it out of any combination of ingredients you choose. So the type of release or cutting away can be supported by the type of ash it is as well. The possibilities are truly endless. Now let's talk about all the ways you can work with fire in your practice. It's the perfect element to work with during the summer months when the sun is at its strongest, the ultimate source of fire. To feel the manifestations of this power, go out on a sunny day and feel the warmth and light of the sun. Hear the crackling of logs and smell the smoke from a burning fire. As you gaze into the transformational flame of a candle, immerse yourself in the energy of fire. One of the more obvious ways to use fire is to practice candle magic. You can choose a corresponding color to your intention and create a candle spell. You can also burn sigils or your written intentions in a cauldron or a fireproof dish to release them into the universe. I have a small cauldron I use to burn petitions and sigils because this is a much safer way of doing it, especially if indoors. You can also have bonfires or hearth fires. Listening to the crackle of the kindling as it burns and watching the embers release sparks into the air can induce a calm, meditative state. Again, you can burn intentions in these fires as well. You could do some kitchen witchery and work with the element of fire through cooking as well. In years past, hearth fires were often used for cooking 
And now we can use our ovens or stove tops to incorporate that same fiery heat. Another idea is to make spell and ritual oils. You can create a fire element intention oil by infusing the herbs I spoke about earlier and then use this oil to dress candles that are in the fire colors. Fire has also long been used as a form of divination where you use it to scry. The flames and smoke from any fire source can be read for visions and signs based on the movements and shapes that they make and some traditions use the ashes from ritual fires for divination. You can bring on a meditative state by lighting a candle in a dimly lit room and gazing at the flame too. Most people are familiar with moon water, but did you know you can also make solar water in a similar way by setting water out in the sunlight to charge? You can then use this for cleansing negative energies to fuel defensive spells as offerings to sun deities or however else feels right to you. There is also something called fire cider that you can make. This is a spicy tonic used in alternative medicine to boost immunity and fight colds. It's kind of controversial on if it really works as advertised though, and there's currently no direct research on fire cider and its role in immune health. Because of this, I've never made it personally, but I've seen lots of things posted about it online, so I'm sure you could find a recipe guide out there if you're interested. Something I used to love to do was use flash paper in spell work. Flash paper is available at theatrical supply stores and is usually used for stage magic, but it's also great fun in spell casting. You can write your intentions or certain symbols or sigils on a piece and light it to see it go up in smoke. Sex magic would fall under the element of fire as well. You can also symbolically honor the element of fire by engaging in vigorous exercise or ritual dance, which raises the heat of your body, stoking your internal flame. Passing items through fire or smoke are common methods of ritual cleansing and purification. A traditional purification ritual, usually done at Beltane or Samhain, is driving animals, or in modern times, automobiles, between fires. Jumping the fire is also traditional at Beltane for purification and to ensure a prosperous year. In modern times, jumping over or dancing around a lit candle is often considered a suitable and safer alternative, especially if access to the outdoors is limited. If you aren't able or don't want to actually burn anything and have candles, you can use other options. You could use an LED candle if you wish, and these days they make some very realistic ones that flicker and are even made of real wax. There are also phone apps where you can light a digital fire, and I know some of them also make a crackling fire noise. I'll try to find one and list the name of it down in the description below. There are also videos online of burning fires you could use too. It's all about tapping into your subconscious to pull meaning out of the fire energy and you don't need a physical burning fire to do that. For those of you who don't use all the tools but instead just work with your own energy and willpower, you can still work with the fire element. You can call the fire element or any of the others into a space even without items to represent it. You can then use visualization to imagine a fire or even just the fire colors. If you're really good at visualization, you can set up a mini altar in your mind with the different tools, symbols, colors, etc. that relate to fire. When creating workings, you can layer all these different associations together to form a spell that's more personal to you and will be more effective. For example, you could do a candle spell by using a red candle, but then adding to it by carving it with fire sigils and the alchemical symbol, dressing it with a fire spell oil, and rolling the candle in fire-related herbs. You can then perform the spell when the sun or moon are on one of the fire astrological signs. There are so many layers you can add on to make spells more powerful. Some people might find it naturally more difficult to work with certain elements over others, and it takes time to build a relationship with each of them. It will all depend on your energetic vibration and how you associate with each element. For example, my sun sign is Scorpio, which is a water sign, and though I've always felt very connected to water and love to swim, I also tend to do more fire spells than any other type. Fire magic is quickly manifested and filled with primal energy. The fire element is the element that spurs us on to do great things. It's the energy and force behind our greatest and worst acts as humans. Like a sword, the element of fire has two very different sides. One is warm and illuminating, the other is furious and burning. These are neither good nor bad in and of themselves, it's simply fire's way. It can't help but be what it is energetically. 
Therefore, when we talk about fire magic, we do so cautiously and respectfully, knowing that it can empower, enlighten, and comfort as surely as it can destroy if allowed to get out of hand. Just as a quick PSA, please remember when working with fire to be careful and always practice fire safety. Never leave a candle or incense unattended and always extinguish them before leaving the room or going to sleep. Use durable candle holders which are made of non-combustible materials and don't tip over easily. It's a good idea to have working smoke alarms installed throughout your house. Fire can quickly get out of hand, so please be thoughtful when lighting any type of fire. I hope you found this video helpful and learned something new. I really appreciate everyone who watches my videos and leaves comments, and especially all my subscribers. It really means a lot to me. There will be more Element videos coming out soon, as well as others, so if you do enjoy these videos and want to stay up to date and be notified every time I upload a new one, hit the bell notification icon. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or video ideas for me, leave them down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next Friday. Have a magical day! Bye!